Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, I thought I made this one already, but I guess I didn't. It's on everything with elevators. Specifically, we're going to be looking at forces. This can be combined with kinematics too, but I'm not getting into that today. So, first of all, if we're talking about elevators, let's talk about how we solve force problems, because that's the most popular kind of question they like to ask. How I like to solve force problems is, step one, F, B, D. Draw a free body diagram, all the forces acting on the object. Step two is my Newton's second law, in other words, F net X and Y. For an elevator, it's always going to be F net Y, because, you know, elevators move up and down. So F net Y is all the forces going up, minus the forces going down, and you're going to set that equal to mass times acceleration. Specifically the Y component, but it's not going to matter for this problem, because there is no X component in an elevator. And then finally, step three is to basically solve, answer the question, do algebra, all that good stuff. So let's just explain this with an example. Number one, I have someone riding in an elevator, and because this is a physics class, that person is going to be standing on a bathroom scale. For whatever reason, physics professors love giving this question where someone is standing on a bathroom scale. You should try it sometime, it's fun. And for this particular scenario, first I'm gonna give the mass of the person, which we'll say is 60 kilograms, and I know that this elevator has a velocity going downward of three meters per second. At the same time, there is an acceleration going upwards at two meters per second squared for acceleration. Now the first question I have for you is, is this even possible? And if so, how? How can the velocity be going down and the acceleration going up? I'll tell you, the only way we have this scenario is if the elevator is slowing down. Whenever velocity and acceleration point in opposite directions, we're slowing down. And whenever they point in the same direction, we're speeding up. So in other words, if the velocity is going down, that means we're moving down and slowing down, which means this person started at the top of the elevator and they're heading down and they're slowing to a stop right now. That's what's going on. Not that that's important for the math or for the answer. Oh wait, I forgot to write the question. I want to know what is the reading on the scale? And if you know anything about elevator physics, what I'm really asking for is the normal force. The normal force from the bathroom scale on the person. So let's go ahead and solve this. Step one is free body diagram. I have a weight force of mg pointing down and a normal force pointing up, which I like to call fn like that. And that's it, there's no other forces touching this person. So then my next step is writing the Newton's second law equation, F net Y equals all the forces going up, which was just Fn, minus the forces going down, which was just Mg, and I set that equal to mass times acceleration. Now I know that acceleration, it is positive two because it points upwards. So that's gonna be two. The velocity frankly doesn't matter at all. All that matters is the acceleration. So it doesn't matter if this velocity pointed down or if it was up, all that matters is the acceleration for this problem. Okay, we're solving for normal force. And by the way, a lot of you out there, you think you have a shortcut, Fn is equal to the weight, Mg. That is sometimes true, but it is not going to be true for this case. And again, the reason why is because we are accelerating. But I do know the mass, mass G is gonna be 9.8, or you can use 10. And then that equals, again, mass is 60, and the acceleration is positive two. So now we just have to basically add the 60 times 9.8 to both sides, plus 60 times two is 120. And we'll just plug this in a calculator and get a final answer. So first I'm doing 60 times 9.8, which is 588 plus 120. I wanna pause here just for a second. This 588 is the mg. In other words, this is the person's normal weight. However, the 120 is coming from the acceleration, which is going to make the person feel heavier than they actually are. And as a result, the reading on the scale will be higher. So the normal force is 708 newtons, and that's going to be our answer. So now we're going to do a couple more today. 
Here's the second one. This time the person is not standing on a bathroom scale. Thank goodness. But we're going to be focusing on something else for this problem. The tension cable in the elevator holding this person up. Let's say the person and elevator have a combined mass of 1,100 kilograms. And at this point in time, the acceleration is one meter per second squared in the downward direction. Like we said before, velocity doesn't matter. And my question is gonna be, what is the tension in the cable? So first things first, free body diagram. Again, we have mg going down, weight of the person and elevator combined this time, because that's the mass I gave us. And then we have a tension force T pointing up, that's from the cable. That's it for the free body diagram, very similar setup. So when I write F net Y, it's gonna be forces going up T, minus forces going down MG equals MA. And now let's plug in and see what we know. Tension is what we're solving for, so we don't know that. Mass is 1,100, G is always 9.8. On the right side, mass again is 1,100. And the acceleration, I'll scroll up, it's not one, it's negative one. Negative because it's going down. Now by the way, technically, if you really want to, you can define downward as positive and upward as negative. What that will change is that now it would be mg minus t equals ma, and now this would be positive one, and you'll notice we swapped the order of mg and t. Now I'm not doing it this way, because I've already got it set up this way, but you could do it with downward as positive if you really want to. Be very careful with that because it's very easy to make a mistake. And then now the only thing to do is plug in and solve again. So 1,100 times 9.8 is 10,780. And on this side we have negative 1,100. So I just need to add 10,780 to both sides. And again, just to quickly explain what these numbers mean, this number is the weight of all the passengers in the elevator, while the 1,100 is the effect of the acceleration in other words, the people in the elevator are going to feel slightly lighter than normal because it's minus 1,100. And we'll get a final answer of 9,680 newtons. And there we go. Now we've got one more for us today. This one's gonna be an interesting one. I see this sometimes. So again, I have my elevator with someone inside, but this time the elevator is gonna be operated by a counterweight system connected to a pulley. So here's my pulley, and we have some mass connected on the other side, capital M. And the design specifications for this counterweight are going to be such that I achieve a maximum acceleration of four meters per second squared for again, a combined mass of elevator and people inside of 1,100 kilograms. My question for you is, what does the mass have to equal in order to achieve this. So I'm gonna help us out with this one because it is a weird one. Step one is the same, free body diagram. Because we have multiple objects, we're gonna to have to do a free body for every object, the mass and the elevator. So for the people and the elevator, it's gonna be mg going down with a tension T going up, still connected to a cable. For the mass on the left side, it's going to have its own mg, which I'm differentiating it by using uppercase M versus lowercase M. And this is also gonna have a tension. Now, should I call this tension like T1 and this one T2? Well, I can, but it doesn't matter because T1 is going to equal T2 because of Newton's third law. Every force has an equal and opposite reaction force, which basically means T1 is gonna cancel with T2. So it's not gonna matter. So now I'm ready for Newton's second law but I'm not gonna do F net X or F net Y. I'm gonna do F net of the system. I like to do this whenever I have pulley problems and think about it like this. If this elevator's going up, let me erase some of this. If this elevator's going up and this elevator's going down, I have different ways I'm defining my system. In other words, for the elevator and the person, up is positive, down is negative, but for the other side, down is positive and up is negative because I'm going in the direction of motion. 
I recommend doing that whenever you have a pulley problem or else it can get very confusing. And if you want to make up as positive for both, you cannot do that. It will not work, I promise. So for that reason, this MG right here, since it's in my positive direction, the new one I defined, it's going to be positive MG. And then the only other force that didn't cancel was this MG right there, which we said was negative, so minus little mg. And that's going to equal mass times acceleration. But of course, I'm going to ask you, which mass is that? Is it the mass of the people in the elevator? Or is it the mass of the counterweight? Or is it the mass of both? And the answer is both. Whenever you're doing the system, you need to do all the masses added up. So little m plus big M. So now let's plug in what we know. Big M, I don't know, I'm solving for it. G is 9.8 minus little m, which is 1,100. G is 9.8, again, equals little m plus big M. So that's going to be 1,100 plus capital M in parentheses, very important. And then we said the acceleration was 4 meters per second squared. So now let's see how good we are at algebra. It's going to be 9.8m minus, I'll just plug that in, 10,780 equals, for the right side, I do need to distribute the 4 to both terms, need to. So it's going to be 4,400 plus 4m, and then how do we solve for m here? Hopefully you know, I need to subtract 4m from both sides and add 10,780 to both sides because I'm getting all the m's on one side and all the other numbers on the other side. So that's going to be 5.8m equals 15,180. And then finally, the last step is to divide by 5.8. So that counterweight needs to be 2,617 kilograms, which is massive. So that's all the problems I have to look at today. Thank you all for watching. If you do have any questions, please post them in the comments. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.